Here we go. Come on. Good morning. Good morning. Have a come up here and we'll sit up here today. Come on. I saw you guys last week, right? How you doing again? <laughs> come on. It can come. There's plenty of room. All right. Good morning. Good morning. You're a little sleepy and slow, like Father Thomas. <laughs> Hard to get up in the morning sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, have a seat. All righty. Did you hear the story today? Were you listening? Yes. Yes, you were really listening? Come on. Yes. Hey, you want to sit over here? Okay, wherever you want. <laughs> so we heard something today. We heard that Jesus got up early in the morning, <laughs> and he went to the temple area, right? The temple area is the holy place of God, right? Where God, God's house was. God lived kind of like this, like the church, the temple area, okay? This is our temple. We call it a church. It's a little different, okay? Just a different word, but God is here. And Jesus is there, and he's teaching the people, right? And the Pharisees and the scribes come along, and they are the religious leaders, really, of the day, kind of, you know? You want to go back? <laughs> does, a, does a mom or dad want to come up? You can, you, they can sit with you. You can sit with them and give them a little comfort. Come on. Yeah, we're good. Don't worry. You can be my shepherd, too. <laughs> so they're there, and uh, they come to him, and our story says what? They bring him a woman, and they make her stand in the middle of the crowd, and Jesus is riding on the ground. And what do they say? Hmm? Yeah? She's sinned a great deal. She's committed adultery, right? And what then? She says, they say, the law of Moses says what? Hmm? We should stone her. Stone her to death. Does that seem right? No, right? Stones are difficult things, right? I have a stone. You want to take a stone from here? Go ahead. Everybody take a stone. I had to go out in the garden early in the morning. <laughs> Pick these stones. Go ahead. Everybody take one. Big one, little one. I hope we have enough. I think we do. Yeah. Feel that stone, right? Grasp it in your hand. You feel it's... It's hard, right? It's got rough edges. It's very, it's not a fun thing necessarily. Go ahead, take one. Take one, go ahead. Yeah, everybody. Go ahead, there's some more. Take a stone. What do you think of this? What do you think of these stones that you have? It's cold? Mm-hmm. What else? Heavy? Mm-hmm. It's hard? Yeah? Huh? Could really hurt someone, yeah. It's sharp on some edges, right? Anything else? Hmm? It's dusty and a little dirt sometimes on it, yeah. This is not something that's generally pleasant to us, right? But they say the law of Moses that God gave to them says that there is punishment for different kind of sins. You all, you know the Ten Commandments, right? We heard that story. God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses for the people to, to live by, right? And then there were punishments attached to those sins. And this one says this woman should be stoned to death. Does that sound like God's heart that we know? No, right? Do you think God's heart is like this? Like this stone that you have in your hands? You want to come up? Yeah, come on. Mommy, Mommy can come too. <laughs> We're going to have a shepherd on this side. <laughs> Do you think God's heart feels like a stone? No. No, right? How come then that the Ten Commandments say this? And, you know, Moses made this command that this, this was the punishment for this thing. God, in another part of the Gospel, Jesus says it's because of your hardened hearts, okay? 
that I made these laws. Jesus, when talking about a, a, a divorce, he says, because you had hard hearts, Moses made this law and allowed you to do this. But God said no. God says that you are to remain united forever. God has a different kind of heart, okay? Sometimes we get the hardened hearts. When you get angry at somebody or somebody does something mean to you, do you get mean or angry back sometimes? Hmm? Right? Yeah, you want them to get punished, right? If they get caught doing something wrong, right? Yes? But what happens when it's you? When you're the one that have done something wrong? Hmm, yeah? You feel sad, yeah? And what happens when you get caught doing something you know you shouldn't have? You get punished, but do you want to get punished? No, right? You try to hide it right? You try to sneak that cookie out of the cookie jar, right? Without mom or dad seeing, or take a snack when you're not supposed to sometimes. We've all been, we've done little things like that, right? But when we get caught, uh-oh, oh my goodness. We don't want to be punished, right? We want to be forgiven, right? And that's kind of the message that Jesus is giving today. They say that God demands, or Moses demands, that the law says that she should be stoned, okay? But there's another reading here, okay? This is a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And listen to this. Thus says the Lord uh, my God, I will sprinkle clean water upon you to make you clean, to clean you from all your false ways, your idols. I will give you a new heart, a new heart and a new spirit I am taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. That's a beautiful message, right? You want, feel, feel your, your, your flesh, right? You can feel your flesh is, is like soft and smooth and nice, right? Your heart is like that too inside, okay? Your heart is made of flesh. It's beautiful, it's warm, it's, it's got blood pumping through it, it's got life. You think you have a stone for a heart? No, right? We don't. And we don't want to have stones for hearts, right? We want to have a living heart. We want to have a, a heart after God's heart, like God's heart and God's spirit, right? And we want to forgive one another. So it's easy to judge people, you know, sometimes when we say, okay, well, I know that they've done something wrong. I know that they've done something wrong against me. Sometimes do you point out, oh, you know, uh, they did that. You do that sometimes, yeah? We tell on other people, but we forget that we've done some things wrong too, right? We all want to be forgiven. We all want to have a beautiful heart. You have, yeah, something to say? It's tattletaling, <laughs> right? Tattletaling can be dangerous, right? Because when we tattletale, the other person can tattletale on us if they know what's happening about us. Now, does that mean that we should get away with doing wrong things? No, right? There is always going to be kind of, if we get caught, of course, a punishment. But even if we don't get caught, when we know that we've done something wrong ourselves, we know it, right? And we can feel sad, like you said, in our hearts. We know that there's something wrong that we've done, and we want to go to make amends for that, what we want to ask forgiveness. Who do we ask forgiveness from? No, go ahead, tell me all, all together. God, right? We, the, the older ones among you that have made First Communion, you went to First Holy Confession, right? And you confessed what you've done wrong, right? And God says, you're forgiven, right? And that's the good news. And then we get an, a second chance. Jesus is doing that today for this, this woman that they placed before him, okay? Then this sin, you know, it's not just about the woman, though, you know, because there was a man involved in doing the sin, too, and I'll let your parents explain that one day, you know? So it's very curious that he's not, they don't drag him and put him in the middle. So that tells us something very important. These people weren't interested in justice. They weren't interested in, in really, you know, having God's law. They were trying to trick Jesus. Because in the end, they want to have him hang on a cross. They want to crucify him. You know? Can you imagine? 
That happened, right? We know we're going to celebrate those things. We're going to remember those things in the coming weeks. But look behind you. Look at this big, what, what is usually up there? Yeah, tell me. The, the, the big, big crucifix, right? Jesus on the cross. What happened? Where is he? Yeah? What happened? He's covered up. He's, he's, he's risen and he's died and risen. But today he's covered up. How come he's covered up? Yeah? Well, Easter is coming and Passion Tide. This is what we call Passion Tide, okay? It's the week before Palm Sunday, which is Passion Sunday, next Sunday. And in a way, the church wants to remind us, you know, we want Jesus in our lives so much, right? Because he gives us his mercy. He gives us his forgiveness. He would die for us, even though he's innocent, he's never done anything wrong, okay? But he's the one that does that. Can you imagine if you didn't have Jesus in your life? If he was hidden, if he was, we never knew him? Can you imagine that? That we couldn't get forgiveness? We couldn't have a life with Christ, with Jesus? That would not be so good, right? Right? No, we come here, huh? Nobody would be alive. Well, nobody would be alive forever, that's for sure. We wouldn't have eternal life, right? So we might live in this life, and, but we don't know what would happen. But if we have Jesus in our life, we're going to rise with him. We're going to be in glory, and we'll talk about that in the coming weeks. Yeah. If we didn't have life, we'd just be stones. Now, there's a statement. That's the truth, right? That's the truth. Just for a moment, not very hard, drop that stone in front of you. No, no, drop it, drop it, yeah. You hear that noise? That's hard, right? That's stone on stone. That would hurt if you had thrown that at somebody, right? Like we said. We don't want that. We want to drop our stony hearts, and we want a heart like God's own heart, right? That what we want in this life? Oh my goodness. What kind of hearts do we want? Hearts of flesh. A heart like God, right? We want a heart that's, like you said, living. You can stop dropping the stones now. <laughs> okay, so remember, we want to have Jesus in our life. We want to have forgiveness, okay? We want forgiveness for ourselves, and we want to forgive others, and we have to do that, okay? We want a heart that is not made of stone, but a heart that is made of flesh and of God, right? Okay, can you remember that this week? Yes? Okay, I'm going to ask you to pick up your stones quietly, and one at a time, come to this bucket, and you can drop it in there, and then you can go back to your seats and give mom and dad or grandma and grandpa a hug, say, I love you, with your... Your good hearts, your heart after God. Drop it. It makes noise. Just remember, that would hurt somebody. We don't want to throw stones. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. That's, that's a big rock. That's a big stone. Go ahead, put it in there. Okay. Stony hearts. They really hurt. They hurt in a world that is a mess right now, we know. But the world has always been a mess. Maybe it's a little messier right now than it has been in the past. But we have faith, we have hope that we will overcome the messiness with God's help, with God's grace, if we can convince one another and ourselves sometimes that our hearts need to be changed and other people's hearts need to be changed. And we pray to God's grace that that can happen. The sin of the Sixth Commandment is called one of the seven deadly sins. And the deadly sins are, call, are called deadly sins because they, in a way, kill us. They kill our spirit. They kill our heart. They kill our soul. Now, I know I have sinned against one of the major commandments, and maybe more than one, of course. And I know that pain. I know that I'm forgiven. I've confessed it. But there is always there is always a reminder. It's always with me every day. And that kills my spirit at times. It's hard. It's hard to move forward with that. But with God's grace, I know that I'm forgiven, but I can't forgive myself sometimes. And I can't 
change that, that in my, my soul. That's why it's called a deadly sin. It hurts so much. But with God's grace, we can know that we are forgiven. Maybe that's the punishment that we receive for, for committing a deadly sin, that it's always there on us and we always have that burden. I don't know. I'll ask God when I see him, please, I get there, you know. But it's, it's something that we all can live with, and we have to move forward. We have to know that we are forgiven by God, and one day, hopefully, he can wipe away that stain forever, and even from our memories, the pain of that can be wiped away. But we have to have a heart like God's own heart in order to do that. Christ is the innocent one. Christ is the one that never sinned, and yet he went on that cross so that he could open the gates of salvation so that we could walk through with hearts made after his own self. He is covered up today. Can you imagine, like I said to the kids, if we didn't have him in our lives, if we didn't have Christ to save us, if we didn't have the message of the Gospels that we need to be more and more like God, that we need to take away our stony hearts and have a new heart, a new spirit, like God's own. That is what we receive at baptism and confirmation, confession and Eucharist and all the other sacraments. We confess our sins, we ask God for forgiveness, and he doesn't pick up a stone and throw it at us. Rather, he goes on the ground and writes who knows what. And then he stands before us and says, has no one condemned you? And we can answer, I hope, no, sir, no one. And we can hopefully hear in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, neither do I condemn you. Go in peace and sin no more. Let us remember to have a heart like God.